everybody. This video is going to cover how to remove and replace caliper piston dust boots without removing the calipers from your vehicle. Uh, I did this project on my 2020 Shelby GT500 with Brembo brakes, but the process is basically going to be the same on any vehicle with disc brakes. I take my car to the track quite a bit. Uh, the OEM brake setup is pretty impressive, generates a lot of heat, does a great job reeling in the car. Uh, but it's worth noting that I have some aftermarket brake mods. I have Hawk Performance DTC70 front pads, 60s in the rear, as well as Motul RBF uh, 700 racing brake fluid. The combination is uh, more intense than the OEM setup, so it reels the car down more quickly and therefore generates more heat. Even with the OEM brakes, you're probably going to end up with uh, dust boot cracking if you go to the track enough. Um, but the aftermarket brake mods that uh, make it stop more violently are just going to accelerate that process. On to the parts for the GT500. You're going to need two bags for the front, two bags for the rear. The fronts have six for the six piston Brembo up front calipers. The rears have four in them each. Uh, the fronts are non-existent. The rears are plentiful, but at the time of this video, I got the only two front rebuild kits for the GT500. Chuck from Middleton Motorsports put in an emergency order request for both front and rear uh, rebuild kits. Hopefully that gets fulfilled soon and you can either call or email him to order parts directly. The previous screen was the full retail price. Email Chuck and he'll take care of you. Uh, these are the included instructions, uh, basically worthless. Just follow my video, it's not that hard. So taking a look inside uh, the caliper here, um, on the engine side, if you will, or the inside, uh, those boots don't look too bad, uh, but I do have this uh, air deflector mod, I think that's called Vorschlag or Vorschlag. Uh, that directs air from the vent, from the cooling duct against that, and it uh, keeps the inner side there nice and cool. The outside's kind of blocked by the rotor, but let's see if I move the, camera there so as you can see those dust boots are all heavily cracked I'm still gonna replace all six and you can see there's just small cracks there on the inside that's on the back side of the uh, front uh, passenger side caliper all right, I'm gonna try and uh, hold the camera and do this at the same time so I got a little pick just coming in the corner right here. Sticking it in there. Pulling it out. There we go. And then just pull off the uh, rubber seal right there. And there is a dust boot removed. There is a, a metal ring on the outside there and the inside which fits in that channel is just rubber. Uh, smallest one goes on the bottom and then the top two or the middle and the top look like they're the same size but the top one is actually just a hair bigger. That's the three from the inside. I will clean those out. Uh, so I'm gonna spray some uh, brake cleaner in around the edges, collect it in a bucket and then install the new rings. Got uh, just your standard brake cleaner. Got the uh, tube in there. Just cleaning around the edges here. Make sure there's no debris up there because the boots were cracked. Starting at the top, wash my way downward. It helps to have the pistons out a little bit so you can have access easily for this outer uh, lip here, this channel, I guess you'd call it. Um, if they're not out far enough, you can always take a, uh, you know, Phillips or a regular screwdriver and uh, just pull on the channel out there and, and prime out. Mine are already out pretty good because uh, my brake pads were pretty much worn to nothing. If it's not out, you can grab on that lip and just uh, pry it out just a little bit. Be careful they don't pop out your piston. There, it's coming out even more. So starting with the top one, uh, this one is the one that ends in 46. Trying to do this one-handed. Get it on that outer channel right there. Give it a spin, make sure it's on there, uh, not bound up in any way. 
I'm actually gonna do all three, and then I'm going to uh, push them in a little bit uh, just so it's easier to get the, um, you know, that outer lip with the metal ring in there inserted all the way around the caliper. Uh, middle one is 45. So get that in, in there over that outer channel. There we go, give it a spin. It's fully seated. The small one on the bottom is the one that ends in 43. Give it a spin. All right, now as you go to push in these uh, pistons, they're gonna push on the other ones out. Uh, be careful you don't, uh, you know, pop them out. Voice over time, skipping ahead to uh, the rears here just for a second, because I'm showing a tool that I use, my caliper piston spreading tool. Um, I didn't start using this on the fronts initially. Um, I was just working on pushing the pistons in by hand. Um, but uh, getting the pistons retracted into the calipers uh, basically makes seating the dust boots a non-event. Um, you can see here, just by pressing the pistons in, the dust boots actually seated themselves. The piston spreader tool works uh, best if you don't have that. Um, I started out doing this project a different way. I was just using a piece of wood. You can pull individual pistons back, be careful you don't shoot out the others, and then I actually use the edge of that, uh, it's kind of like a quarter inch piece of uh, wood. I use the edge of that to press the, the uh, edges of the dust boots into place. That was working pretty well, but again, the uh, piston spreader works best. Once you get it flat, then you can press uh, wood against it and pull on both sides, uh, pull both sides of the wood, and uh, really press that uh, seal in all the way around. On to the rears. Uh, a little bit more of a challenge just because I don't have uh, the studs to slide the caliper out like I do on the front. These bolts here are considered one-time use. They are 18 millimeters. Uh, people will often just clean up the uh, thread locker, put a new thread locker on there and reuse the bolts. I have uh, some of those here in my garage in stock, so I'm just gonna put new bolts in. Um, but uh, getting the rotor out of the way so you have access to work on the dust boots, Got to remove the uh, electronic parking brake. That is, uh, it's these bolts that go on the back here, not these little star looking bolts on the front. Um, these are 13 millimeter. Those are pretty easy to get out. These uh, big 18 millimeter bolts on the hydraulic caliper are gonna probably require a breaker bar. They're in there pretty good. And uh, then, you know, I've got hangers to hang the calipers all the way. I hung the uh, hydraulic one up here while I was getting the rotor out. Um, to get the brake pads out, you gotta pound these pins out towards uh, the fuel tank, if you will. Um, that's those pins there. Slide out that retainer clip there, get the pads out. And then uh, I just uh, kind of loosely remounted the caliper back into the hub here so I have it uh, secure while I'm working on getting the dust boots out. So I've got a pick here on the rear caliper Getting the dust boot out. That's pretty easy. And that's just a cleaner that I just used running down there. That's not brake fluid. In the rear kit, there are four dust boots and uh, two of them are larger than the other two. Uh, they are ending in numbers 42 and 41. Uh, 41 is the smaller of the two. I did get out my uh, calipers and measure, confirm that the smaller uh, piston is in fact the one on the bottom. And it, you can tell just by looking at it too, but the upper one is a larger, that's the 42. The bottom one's the smaller is the 41. Since my dust boots are cracked, I'm gonna spray some uh, brake clean around the edges all the way around just to clean them out, make sure there's no debris in there. So after you get them cleaned out around the edges there, you got to use both hands. That's why I didn't film that part, but uh, I came in the top and bottom or front and back of the caliper there and uh, just slipped that uh, rubber dust boot over the uh, outside channel. If you can see, let's see the outside channel. 
is uh, right there. Helps out the piston out a little bit. If it's not out, you can step on the brakes gently. Be careful you don't shoot your pistons out. Have a piece of wood in between or uh, you know, just pull it out. Pry it out with a screwdriver just a little bit. But it helps to have it out. And then I give it a twist to make sure it's not bound up. And I'll seat all four of them like that and then work on pressing them in. To spread the pistons, I've got a piston spreader, but uh, it was too tall. I had to grind down the ends uh, with my grinder, and it uh, now fits in there. And I'm gonna ratchet the pistons back to flush. That's what they look like fully seated. It doesn't look like they're all the way in, but that's, uh, I'll show you the other side here in just a sec. That is fully seated right there. Go look at the other side, which I haven't done yet. This is the other side. You can see how the boots uh, stick up around the edges there. And uh, those little tabs right there that uh, you can see, those are not uh, inside the caliper. They stay on the outside. Success. Uh, got it all buttoned up, back together, lubed up. Got the pins in, cleaned up. Got these uh, rear caliper new bolts torqued to, those are 103 uh, foot pounds. Uh, got these resecured. I didn't look up the uh, torque settings on those. I just went tight on those. Um, there's there's no major force on those. That's just a parking brake. Um, but uh, got to do the other side and call it complete. Over on the passenger side, the second uh, side I'm doing on the rear, much easier than the first one because I was learning what I was doing. Got my uh, caliper uh, piston spreader. I had to grind it down um, to fit because it was too tall, too long. Got it in there and just uh, ratcheted it and uh, pushed the pistons all the way back. And in the process, that fully seated the... Uh, Dust boots on both sides. Back is actually pretty good and pretty easy once you uh, figure out what you're doing. Well, that's how you change your caliper dust boots on your brakes. Hopefully you found this information helpful. Um, and remember, if uh, you need these for 2020 through 2022 GT500, contact Chuck at Milton Motorsports. Uh, hopefully the front kits become available. I got the only two that were in the Ford inventory system. The rears, there's plenty of those kits out there, but uh, more people will need these kits as uh, people track these cars and also as they age and the rubber gets uh, brittle. Thanks for watching. See you next time.